Life is but a short span of a few decades. Each person arrives in this world bare and departs empty-handed. So, where does the value of life manifest? If one is to be a human, then one should be a person of value. I believe this is a viewpoint that everyone can accept. The whole world is asking, what is the highest value in life? Many people put forth their ideas, diverse and numerous. However, Lao Tzu is remarkably insightful, he tells us, the highest value in life is X. Now that we have the concept of algebra, we understand that anything can be represented by the X you assume. X can be equal to anything, and similarly, Lao Tzu used a concept similar to X back in the day, called Tao. Tao is an abstract hypothetical noun. It can represent all the concepts we need to know, encompassing everything we can conceive of as the highest value. How to realize the value of life is something everyone wants to know. Each person has their own opinions, and when discussing it, there are plenty of principles. However, Lao Tzu encapsulates it with just two Chinese characters, Xing Dao. Dao is meant to be practiced, Dao is not meant to be merely spoken about. Instead of talking about it endlessly, you might as well embody it yourself. So, what is Dao? Lao Tzu tells us, Dao Fa Zi Ran, meaning that Dao is synonymous with nature, and nature is Dao. This is quite interesting. Since Tao is nature and nature is Tao, why doesn't Lao Tzu directly say nature instead of using the term Tao? Because if you say nature, everyone will desperately try to observe everything they can see, and everything becomes nature. Your thoughts cannot diverge, so he uses Tao to represent all of nature. What is the most profound thing that nature impresses upon us? You should be able to think of it, selfless dedication. Look at the grass in Springham. It starts to sprout and grow. When cows and sheep approach, it doesn't run away because it doesn't even have the concept of running. It silently gets eaten without any complaints. The river water flows slowly, nourishing everything around it. Even if someone opens another channel to divert it, it has no objections. This is called nature, this is selfless dedication. So, what is the highest value for us humans? Some people should have thought of it, it is benefiting the community. Because we are part of the social community, if each person puts in their effort to contribute to this community, that is of immense value. However, at this point, some people may disagree, thinking that this is just a saying and that people should live for themselves, as humans are inherently selfish. Firstly, we need to determine what human is. Looking at it from the perspective of the first chapter of the Tao Te Ching, it becomes clear, Ming Ke Ming Fei Chang Ming. If a person doesn't have a name, then the word human can represent all humans. Once a person has a name, it can only represent that unique individual. I believe everyone should understand the idea expressed by Ming Ke Ming Fei Chang Ming. When we talk about humans now, we are not referring to any specific individual but rather all individuals. The reason why a person is considered human is because they possess human nature. If a person cannot live according to the human nature bestowed upon us by nature, then the essence of being human ceases to exist, and one becomes akin to an animal. Therefore, the existence of humans is rooted in their possession of human nature. This is what is meant by nature. So, do you think humans should live for the community or for themselves? Now, let's contemplate how one should live as a human. How does the Tao Te Ching address this? In the seventh chapter of the Tao Te Ching, there is a line. This means that the sage understands how to place himself behind others, and in doing so, he ends up leading. At this point, many people may be puzzled. How does the sage lead by putting himself last? Now, imagine you are the sage. In the midst of a crowd where everyone is running forward, you voluntarily step back behind the others. So, what is it that the crowd is pursuing? Of course, its benefits. When everyone realizes that you have stepped back, they admire you even more. They say you are remarkable, and even when there are merits to be gained, you don't compete for them. Clearly, the success was achieved under your leadership, yet you humbly let others take credit first. At this point, people feel a sense of shame, and they become actively involved in pursuing your ideals. When sharing the fruits of success, the crowd willingly makes way for you, allowing you to be the first to pick the fruits. I believe this example vividly illustrates why the sage, by putting himself last, ends up leading. There is another phrase, 外起身, 而生存. What does this mean? 
Delai qi shen means treating everything as external to oneself. I won't use my own self-interest to measure everything. Anyway, everything is external to oneself, and everyone can do as they please, as long as it aligns with the Tao. The result is, shen cun, meaning that others end up helping you, completing the spiritual mission you are meant to fulfill in this lifetime. Sometimes, Lao Tzu's words cannot be fully interpreted literally. If you interpret them literally, it might seem strange. Lao Tzu's discussion of the Shin has many meanings, not just referring to the physical body. We need to be very careful and contemplate the position and meaning represented by this Shin. The next phrase is, Wei yi qi wu si yan, gu neng cheng qi si. This means that the sage always considers others without any personal agenda, which is why they can achieve their personal goals. In our own surroundings, we can see that some people are very shrewd, always thinking for themselves, never willing to take a loss. However, such individuals find it challenging to achieve great success. On the other hand, those who wholeheartedly work for the common good and selflessly contribute tend to have a fulfilling life. Do you think this phenomenon corresponds to what the Tao Te Ching refers to as Gu Neng Cheng Qi Si? And what exactly does the Si refer to? Many people interpret the Si as selfishness, associating it with material possession. But why do we have to interpret it in this way? The expression of ideals, the fulfillment of aspirations, and the wishes you want to achieve with the help of others to eventually complete them are also part of the Si. Therefore, Lao Tzu tells us that we are entirely focused on the material level, caught up in visible aspects. You forget that you have a more remarkable, unseen spiritual aspect. So, we can probably understand that a person's highest value lies in gradually realizing the desire to contribute to society and the community. However, this is not an easy task. Why? Because with a slight misstep, you might go in the wrong direction. Inadvertently, what was meant for the common good suddenly turns personal. It's these subtle differences that can lead to unimaginable consequences. Therefore, in Chapter 38 of the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu specifically wrote these lines. First, let's understand what the de means. The de can refer to obtaining something, and it also signifies morality and character, all pronounced the same way in Chinese. The shang de refers to superior things or superior morality. The bu de means that there is no desire in the heart to obtain something. Thus, the meaning of shang de bu de shi yu de becomes clear, those with superior morality act in accordance with nature without any desire to obtain, so they truly possess virtue. Similarly, the understanding of xia de bu shi de shi yi wu de becomes clear. It means that those with lower morality, who constantly hold on to virtue and desire to obtain, ultimately lack true virtue. They cannot let go of the mindset of gain and loss, focus on results, and end up forgetting the Tao, so they gain nothing. Many people vaguely understand this principle, but they find it hard to believe in such things, especially in the modern world where people are often focused on outcomes, performance, opinions of others, benefits, and rewards. If one becomes solely concerned with these aspects, it turns into xia de bu shi de, shi yi wu de. Therefore, after reading Lao Tzu's book, we must strive to change our thinking and habits in our daily lives and gradually cultivate the Tao. While many believe that those on a spiritual path should retreat to monastic life and avoid places filled with desires, ancient Chinese wisdom suggests that one should be in the center of power and interests. This may seem strange to many, so why is this so? I speculate that Lao Tzu knew the best way for individuals to serve society is to take up official positions. If you have resources and power, the only thing the people fear is that you lack a conscience. If you possess authority and resources, and you follow the Tao in everything you do, proceeding according to the natural order, step by step enjoying the process, and everyone follows suit, experiencing a joyful and happy life in the process, wouldn't that be wonderful? This is what is meant by cultivating oneself. When you are good, others are good, and everyone is good. When everyone is unaware of what is truly good, that is genuine goodness, and it is described as at this point, many people might be confused again. Why is it that when everyone is unaware of what is truly good, that is considered genuine goodness? 
Lao Tzu says in Chapter 18 of the Tao Te Ching, 大道废，有仁义，智慧出，有大伟，六亲不和，有孝慈，国家混乱，有忠臣。He makes it very clear. Don't talk about benevolence and righteousness anymore. When you talk about benevolence and righteousness, it means you know that the Great Tao is no longer present. If the Great Tao is still present, everything is benevolence and righteousness, and there's no need to discuss it, right? When everyone is already walking according to the Tao and feeling happy, there's no need to say, "People, don't be distressed, be happy." That would be nonsense. Since everyone is already following the Tao, there's no need to talk about benevolence and righteousness. The Da Dao Fei, 有仁义 When individuals possess knowledge in various fields, which is wisdom, but lack a conscience, they may engage in deceit when they realize it is profitable. If everyone acts based on conscience in all matters, there would be no need for anti-counterfeiting measures, even if people have wisdom, right? The 智慧出有大伟 In a harmonious family, there's no need to advocate for honoring parents and loving children. If everyone is already doing it, speaking these words would be redundant, wouldn't it? From this perspective, you understand that discussions about filial piety arise when there is disharmony in the family. The 六亲不和有孝子 The last sentence should be quite easy to understand. Loyal ministers are spoken of when the country is in turmoil. The 国家混乱有忠臣 Once you understand the content above, you can now think about the workplace, compensation, rewards and punishments, performance. These are all just means, not ends. If you treat them as ends, you'll be distressed every day. If you change your perspective and realize that since you are a human being, you should act according to human nature. And what is human nature? Human nature is morality. It is selfless dedication. Lao Tzu's book is straightforwardly called the Tao Te Ching. And it tells us morality is the highest value of humanity, and the highest morality is serving the community. Nowadays, our society is facing a moral crisis. What is the reason for the moral crisis in today's society? Why does nobody believe in morality anymore? It's because we have been instilled with a strange idea: morality harms people, morality makes you suffer. You must not talk about morality. If you do, to put it bluntly, you are foolish. All the time, we are violating Lao Tzu's philosophy, but we don't know that Lao Tzu understood a principle from nature: to suffer losses is to gain advantages, and to gain advantages is to suffer losses. Who listens to this statement? Nowadays, many people get extremely angry when they hear that suffering losses is gaining advantages. They retort, "What do you mean by suffering losses is gaining advantages? It's clearly just suffering losses." Why claim to gain advantages when you're clearly suffering losses? Don't console yourself. Such people are those who 下士闻道，大笑之 That's even worse. I have explained the meaning of this phrase in a previous video. If you're interested, you can click the link below the video to watch it. In Chapter 51 of the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu says, 万物莫不遵道而归德 This means that all things in the universe follow the Tao, as they act in accordance with the Tao and thus obtain precious things. Only modern people seem to think differently, so we really need to understand whether the Tao is so difficult to explain. Is the Tao really so mysterious? After such a long period of effort from Lao Tzu's time to the present, haven't we been able to further understand the Tao than people from that time? If you have such thoughts, I believe we can achieve it. So. Let's delve deeper into what the Tao really is. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to share your thoughts, please leave your comments in the section below. I look forward to hearing from you.